Wahooji just started his grind to Radiant with Raze. I've come in to watch and replay his video so I can give you guys the best Raze tips possible and help him along his way and make his path a little easier to Radiant. Let's hop on in and see what he's got for us today. All right, as always, we're gonna go round for round here. In this comp right here, it's actually very interesting. We're gonna be playing Sunset with Raze. The issue that I see here already building is Raze is an agent that needs to be enabled. On a map like Sunset, when you're looking at right now a chamber, arena, and a clove, you're not really looking for two too much in terms of enabling so we need a really strong initiator here if we don't have that initiator it's going to be a problem so we'll see what the uh character is that ends up getting picked here so we're moving along and it's a fade so right away i'm looking at this comp and i'm thinking this is going to be a really really tough game for wahujin when you think about sunset as a whole sunset is a map that can be incredibly difficult to scale on first of all as a raise think of it like this if we're going to be attacking b site there's sections to this bomb site first section obviously is going to be b main you want to be fighting for that space this should be easy for him to take should be no problem the next section is number two right here so the front end and then you have three here and technically this would be three and this would be four so if you section off like this these are how the fights would go now with raise raise is really good for taking space quickly the problem is, is that with the agents that he has right now, it's gonna be incredibly difficult for him to double satchel into section three here. So what he's gonna to need to do to adapt his play style with the comp that he has that who can enable him, he's gonna to have to satchel single to work on this area, get control of this space with his entire team, and then satchel late for this one. It's gonna be really, really difficult because you don't have that breach flash, you don't have a sky flash, you don't have a flash or main flash agent to be able to help clear this space for you. So you have to do it as a team, as a group. And you may see this and market control being more important than actually taking back lane control. In this comp, you can even say that throwing a smoke here and a smoke here and allowing them to take the staging ground might be more strong than you trying to take this space and leaving this space open over here. So we'll see how he adapts to this, but the big factor here is how does he satchel, how does he plan his, uh, his attack route, and does he calm? Because comms are going to be very, very key for your entries in these bomb sites. He needs to be taking his time right now to make friends with his fade. This is going to be incredibly difficult. So what they're, what they're calling here is an explode contact. For anyone who doesn't know what that means, basically the idea is we walk up all the way here, and once it, we get to this position, we'll break the trip with the nade, and then we'll blast into sight. Now, how he does that can be really difficult, once again, with the comp. How does he get back lane control or back sight control with no support? Okay, so he made noise, so he's speeding it along, double satchel. He just naded himself a little bit, which is a little bit rough. And now his pathing is questionable. So we actually have the front end, but we don't have control of market. So they have a perfect staging ground of controlling the back lane here, back site, and they have here. So now we're in a trouble spot. <laughs> it's not going to be an easy post plant. Set for 52, three back As you can see, they all flood in from all angles here. And now it's going to be incredibly difficult to hold the site. A site is going to be a stronger site to control here. And I believe that mid top might be a better spot to hit to be able to split onto A or even split onto B. So controlling this uh, zone might be the easiest spot for us to win some rounds. If you have a jet here, you can probably get away with a lot more stuff. It's because you have your cloud burst, you can take space on your own, you can force fights. Free kill, we love that. We're gonna give the bomb. So right away, what I would do is just group everyone up and go towards A. Again, going towards B is gonna be a pain in the ass. You have Cypher here. So if you go towards that area, you can't really section the bomb site properly. You can't traditionally hit like you would with the raise. But on A site, you can control the we're momentum like by all going towards A. a take your numbers and just win from there. This is a protocol that I give to pretty much every student. When you're when you've killed two, just group up, hit one of the extremities. So this way we're we'll going to the elbow area and you just win on attrition alone. So now he's in sight. He's gonna set crossfire right here for this space, which is great. So he doesn't actually have to move right now, being that chamber just got another kill towards mid. So in this situation, we're looking at a 3v2. So we don't have to do anything. We just have to wait at the time here. Here's one CT. I hope it doesn't peek. Uh, okay, so peeking is fine, but you need to calm that you're going to peek because you can see this Reyna is not ready. He's not a mind reader. So 
Calming to the Reyna. I'm swinging CT. 3, 2, 1. Bait me, bait me, bait me. Anything along those lines. Bait is probably the best vocab you can use in a solo queue environment. Bait means I'm giving you free stats. They love free stats, okay? For solo queue, <laughs> your teammates love free stats. So if you say bait me, they're going to respond. They're going to be able to do what you want them to do. So changing your vocab from like a team environment to a ranked environment is very, very important. Think about the audience you're speaking to. Now, this peak didn't need to happen. Again, 3v2 situation, we could have waited for them to scale up to this position while they're more exposed. And then you have lines from elbow, from back site, from the site that they now have to worry about. And their cross replacement is not gonna be nearly as good as this fight right here where they're more 50-50, if you will. Dick, 88. Last player Worst case scenario now, the timing on the peaks are off, and it all comes from communication and when you take the fight. There is really no need to take that fight there. I understand that you have a win condition if you end up winning it there, but once again, they have to scale on the site right now, so there's no rush on that peak. All right, so this is a little bit better. We have market control now, so we'll see how he satchels in if he does choose to satchel in this position. I've got man, I've got man. He's not man. We don't have to rush this. Need it, bro. Need the truth. I already did. It's another truth, though. This ciphers change up his trip location from left and right, so we actually have a slight difference. I think he might have modified off of Hooge's first nade. Okay, huge. This is two v one. He should ask for a tap right now and swing to the right. No comms, no comms in 2v1. Oh no. Gotta be talk, gotta be talking, gotta be talking. Okay. Ends up working out, which is great, but in order to clean this up in a 2v1, we need to be actively talking. This is so important. So you say to your clove, I'm peeking, I'm swinging right, three, two, one, or anything along those lines. So someone needs to take the reins. Someone needs to take the reins in there and just fully control the situation. If you ask for the tap, that's fine. Anything along those lines is great, but just immediately start communicating with your teammate to lock it down. Yeah, just make sure we wait out the flash. He, he flashes for info. Yeah, but we've already dodged it like four times. He knows. <laughs> it's so lucky, man. So you're looking at three on A now. Because of the early info. By now, they've rotated for sure. There's one in CT here. Might be one in C. And then there's... Or sorry, sorry. One in CT. One in A site back here. And probably one on uh, the entrance to A main. There's your A main guy, there's your back site, and there's one CT. I'm back site. I fucking whip my name. Don't need a rush here. We don't need a rush here. This is a big... Uh, I think we can actually just wait for Chamber to take uh, contact here. But now we're satcheling in, and again, you have so much room to stage this satchel in. And communicate that you're doing it. Right now we should be actively talking. I'm back site. I fucking whip my name. Talk about this, talk about this, that uh, you're going in. Your team is not ready for you. And they're playing behind a smoke. So they have to physically come out. Let's yeah. Alive. Uh, nice okay, because he has so much time with the smoke being active here, he doesn't necessarily have to like rush in right away, which is something that happens a lot. When we're playing ranked, when we're trying to hit the site, we're like, oh, there's no like time is so tight. Right? You have to be so careful with how long it takes for you to hit the site. But in reality, you have so much time to stage. So we have time here to say, I'm going to go in, get ready, three, two, one, and then blast into it. It's 5v4 as well. We got lots of time on the clock. Can't see the exact amount of time that we have. Let's see. A minute and 13 seconds left on the clock. We have an eternity to commit to the site. He's blaming it on his nade. Sure, his nade is not great, but he also didn't time and communicate to his team on his satcheling. His action comms are key here. Because think about how these guys have a hard time scaling with you. If they're not right in that smoke, ready to go, they're not going to get any value off your death. And you're just throwing your life away. Again, no flash agents, nothing to support him here. Can you ask for a rain -Alier? Potentially, but that's broken very easily. Do you want to try a flooding out B? There. With a fatal rage rocker? Yes. Okay, awesome. This is a really good call. This is a high-level shit right here. We want to be calling for a raise rocket and a fade alt. This is what we're doing. So our entry is going to be incredibly strong here by leading in and comboing two particular alts right here. We love seeing this kind of stuff. The big factor here is, does the enemy team read this? What we need to be worried about is, sure, our site take is going to be strong. It's going to allow us to take this back space, but then what do we do 
afterwards. Because if we look at how their alts are lined up, we have Clove Alt, Gecko, Jet, and Cypher Alt. Two of these aren't that big of a deal, but Clove can play completely aggressive if they want to and disperse this entire plan right away, being that they have two lives to work with and the Gecko Thrash is perfect for a retake. So if the other team is smart, they play off a of site here, stage through Boba, stage through Market, and they can blast into the site. So controlling back lane here, controlling back site is not gonna be enough. We actually need to have presence on Market here in order to be able to stop this retake. Let's see how they play it. Okay, so they fell off site. This is probably Cypher that we're seeing off to the left here. So this raise rocket here being held is allowing for now us to get a post plant situation. But now the question is, how do they deal and how do they respond with their alts and where do we position? We don't have market control. We're kind of hoping that Reyna makes that play late into the round to be able to start fighting for that space. If we get market control, which looks like we're going to do, oh, this is a huge kill on raise. Then we're gonna be able to now control the staging ground which is only going to be Boba. So they'll send their Thrash through Boba, which should be easy enough to be able to deal with in that situation. What we don't want is to lose Market, which is what we're going to do right now. Gecko's down. Uh, Gecko just downed Arena. So now Gecko can come from this spot and Thrash this way while the forward momentum comes from Boba here. No more points. Uh, Gecko's hit 80. Coming Market. This is going to be a threat. This is a bit scary. There's our Thrash. Perfect. That's taken care of. My we gotta be careful, market. One market, one market. Holy fuck! So the alt was done on Raina's body, so we should have known that there was gonna be one market, and they had that staging ground the entire time. So in this situation here, three v three, hopefully it ends up working out for us. Looks like it's going to, but you can see how the alts play a factor, and if you pay attention to what alts are coming up on the enemy economy and your own, you can plan these site takes, you can plan these combinations, but you also need to be thinking and planning for how you can counter what they're going to throw at you as well. This is what I was talking about early on in the VOD. When you double satchel here, because you don't have support of sky flashes or breach flashes or anything along those lines, it's incredibly difficult to go on your own with the double satchel into the back end. Cypher is easily going to be able to take a 1v1 here and you don't have the support necessary to be able to get you to the right spot. Now, how can we modify this? You can maybe have clove smoke somewhere. Have Clove drop a smoke over into this spot in this corner so that you can satchel into that space and be able to challenge forward onto it. But that's going to be a tough one as well. And that's basically the only thing that you have. Reyna's flashes and leers don't have enough. So you either modify to ask for that utility here or you have a eye being thrown out. Now, ideally, let's say that you get enabled properly and you have the Clove throwing all that for you. So Clove will throw her smoke into the back corner or a spot anywhere around the area. Let's say it's there. And now we double satchel into this space. Ideally, what would need to be happening is your Reyna would also have to eye in at the same time. So you have two targets landing out and that allows you to now fight through if you wanted to or fight with the eye itself. If you can catch them off guard there, it could be a couple kills for you through this area and it'll help you stage and control that back space. But again, we're basically picking at scraps with this comp. It's incredibly difficult if you don't have that flash agent. The other modification that you make is like we talked or suggested about before, which is going to be to do single satchels. You don't necessarily want to be double satcheling in this comp because it's a slower comp and it wasn't ha doesn't really have the tools to enable you the way that you want. So a single satchel into this position right here and controlling this section first might be the key. Again, splitting through mid is gonna also be super helpful with a comp like this, being that it's a more slow and methodical space taking kind of comp. I'll mark it, I'll mark it. Growl. Oh, I can't get the break. I can't get the break. Spike down. He's trying to double satchel into an area. He nades himself, and he also gets shot in the back from a line that nobody can trade him from because he's double satcheling and your compass is too slow. That's what's going to happen on a comp like this. If you don't have what's going to enable you as a raise, you're in for a long night. Now, again, picking at scraps. 
The only real strategy you can see is maybe Reyna going like this and tossing an eye through the wall, if it can reach. But I don't even know if that's possible. <laughs> We'd have to test it. What I say? CT is a threat. Okay, CT is a threat. Calmness, calmness, calmness. Again, he's missing these action comms. He's just going for it right now, which is fine. But at least get someone to get ready to trade off of you. This whole ending here is open right now. We don't have Clove active. I don't know, is there a Prowler that we can ask for? Is there an Eye we can ask for? Before you just go in and get one tapped. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Good shot. So now the question is, go back to Fade. Did Fade have any utility to support us here? Fade has Eye now, right? Again, are we rushing these site takes a little bit too fast? Was there a Reyna layer that could have been thrown from main? There's a lot of questions that have to be asked before you decide to just drop into site like this. Spacing and timing, spacing and timing with this raise utility. Just rushing this way too much. He thinks that he threw a nade to break this, which is silly. He threw the nade back site. <laughs> he might be going through a little bit of a mental struggle right now. I think this is his fourth game, fourth or fifth game and he's going one in three right now. So maybe there's a lot of things going on in his head. This could be a sign of mental fatigue. I often recommend just play three to five games. He's now on his fifth right now, so we might be pushing it. This game could be very mentally taxing. This might be the thing, I might be reaching. There could be many reasons why we didn't win that round or we did what we did to Satchel in. But if this is mental fatigue, again, for everyone in chat who is looking to climb, there's a certain amount of games you should be playing per day, and the rest of the time should be spent VOD reviewing, aim training, or practicing something specific. You want to get the most out of your day, and you don't nef necessarily want to be queuing over and over and over again. For Wuhujin, he's a content creator. He's looking to grow his following. Obviously, he needs to play a lot of games. That's the goal. He wants to get to Radiant, so he's going to play a ton. But the most optimal way, if you're looking to climb, is probably three and five games is probably pushing it. Beyond that, it's just too much. Switching over to the defense side, we look at who can enable us. Again, we have two of our agents that can enable us to a degree, which is Fade and our Cloak. So these two agents here can be worked together using Metal or using our Tether nade combos. So this is great to be able to defend with here. I'm smoked off CT. Satcheling up to the high elevations. Doesn't have the best weapon Let's for this. I'm off you, Reyna. Remaining. Great. Down Peeking off contact here. We love seeing that. Great work. So you can hear that he communicates. I'm peeking off your contact before he ends up do doing it. So all these little comms there. This is what makes or breaks a play like this. It's too aggressive. We don't need to do anything more here. Perfect. Love it. Good. Awesome. Going with his team. Cleans it up. Lovely. Great round overall. Oh, he's dead now. Because his teammates just left him on tiles. Shit. Okay. He's very, very fortunate here. <laughs> when his teammates bailed on him there, he now created that line where they could have come in this spot and from in front of him like the judges did right there. So one thing for everyone, it's a etiquette thing in ranked or in uh, team play environment in general to communicate when you're leaving to your partner on any kind of angle that you were previously holding. Down A. For Hooj, he might not even realize that was the thing because he was scoped in on that one angle. Right Let's back up. This is silly. Love this, love this, love this. Love it. Nice. One's out, one's okay. out. Okay. Oh. Is there a better way to throw this? 1,000%. So we go back. This part's all great. We're in a 4v3, don't need to do anything more. Now, to throw the nade, you could jump throw this. They didn't know he was wide out in the open, but here's the problem. They need to go for a fight. The clove in this situation needs to go for a fight. So running through any of the mollies and like that, completely open. This could just be an inexperience point on Wahujin playing against clove. What's out, what's out? In truth, the nade didn't need to be thrown. However, if you were going to throw a nade, you either jump throw it towards B main, so jump, peek, and throw, or you bank it off here to control the space into where this person is now. Like 
We should be asking oh. for a turtle up here. There's two there on my back. We lost two in mid. No, we totally didn't need to go for it at all. I know exactly. It's unfortunate. And now we have Cypher Alt. Oh my god. You hate to see this. If you don't need to chat, please don't. Don't be aggressive for no reason. So the way that you ask is, can we turtle up here? The reason why I'm harping on this is that he didn't say anything. It's your responsibility to give your team the best information possible to be as successful as possible. Success is bred from good information. In that situation, we're in a 5v3. Reyna does not need to push, and neither does... I can't remember who the other person was, but someone else ended up pushing up as well. There's no need to do any of that stuff. We're just asking to basically make this a 3v3 and open up the round for them to win. So, in order to enable your teammates for success, and some of them are just not going to listen to you at all, but at the very least, if you can absolve yourself of all guilt and say, hey, let's turtle up here. Can we turtle up here? It's 5v3. If they decide to still push through, then you don't have to have a guilty conscience about it. There's nothing more that you could have controlled in that situation. But in this situation, because he didn't do it, I'm going to have to put ownership on him. And that's how you take extreme ownership in order to get the market. best out of market, both your teammates and yourself. Okay, the problem here is if they explode on site, it's Gecko ult and it's Ray's ult. And then he's going to have a real hard time. You'll be running cardio if they end up exploding through the site. Because they didn't end up doing it. Thank goodness for that. So when you see those ops, or so when you see those alts active, you need to think about, if they do this, how do I deal with it? Do I double satchel back into this space? Do I go into boba? What am I doing? Am I playing retake, or am I trying to fight for it? I want to see him being more active with the op. I've done a lot of opping. I opt for about 16 years on many teams uh, through multiple different games. I want to see him moving over towards middle in situation and fighting that area and then leaving B and having someone else play there. Obviously this is solo queue so it's harder for you to be able to organize this kind of stuff but if you talk about it earlier into the round it, it can be enabled and allowed. Spike planted. Probably pushes up on him here. He's probably on CT then. Camera. So back sight. Nade it. Elbow. Okay, so that was better. He comes out that he's gonna do it, but it sounded like Fade wasn't ready to do it. That's my bad. Terrible, terrible idea. One HP. That prowler. Oh my bad. That's how you deal with toxicity. It's like, oh my bad. The person is always right. Just always assume that the other person's right. And you just you just go with that. Even though they're wrong. <laughs> you just they're always right. You just always say that kind of stuff. So his my idea here was to throw utility. His idea was to entry and have him bait him. So two different modalities. Both of them are correct, but you always want to avoid confrontation with your teammates and just make them out to be the one that's right. Oh yeah, my bad. That was my fault. You're you're always always making the uh, teammates right. Say wait, I have prowler. I will say it's not worth your piece. Let them be wrong. 